Now to my final topic, football. Germany's hosting of the ongoing Euro 2024 has provided valuable insights for African nations looking to host large-scale sporting events like we witnessed in Ivory Coast last year. By investing in infrastructure, improving organisation and transparency, promoting community engagement and adopting sustainable practices, observers believe that African countries can enhance their capabilities to host more international tournaments successfully. Well, for more on this, I'm now being joined by Michael Potter, a former footballer and current affairs analyst who joins me from Accra. Michael Potter, it's an absolute pleasure having you on Channels Business Global. Uh, you're in Accra, not in yeah. Manchester. I think it's a bit sunnier in Manchester probably um, this week, but we'll leave that for another discussion. Let's talk about the Euros. I believe we have finished the group stage. Um, lots of people not really happy at the moment with what's happening in the euros i don't know why perhaps they were expecting the kind of glitz glam and tricks that we saw in abidjan for afcon earlier this year it's a bit fizzled yeah. isn't it yeah I, I think um from what i've seen of it you know um i think it, it's what we call football overload you mm. know we've had we've had a lot of um we had the fifa world in qatar uh, European Champions League, the Europa League, and now, um, and now the Euros, and and the season's just finished. The the new the new fixtures are out for the remaining season, and I think a lot of people have come to the conclusion that wow, this is another competition, and it's not been as impressive as previous. I mean, Euro 2020 was a massive success, yeah. full of interest, but this time for some reason it's very slow to get off the ground. And even some of the favourite teams, they've been underperforming. And, um, you know, it's really struggling. Let's hope the momentum, as we get into the um, the last 16 teams, let's hope that the momentum picks up and it becomes very interesting. Look, I'm sure it will. All football competitions go through a dip and they come, up, come in at the other end. And, um, yeah, but let's see what happens. Let's talk more about um, AFCON, uh, which took place, of course, in the Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, earlier this year. A huge success uh, for the country, but then also Africa, because even um, some of the big um, broadcasters in England missed out on AFCON because they kind of yeah. read it off until they realised that, hang on a minute, everybody's talking about it. People love yeah. the football. However, it is going to be difficult for the continent to kind of replicate what we're seeing in Germany. Um, but we could, and potentially that could be a good money earner. I know you've been helping with sports development and football in Accra. Yeah. Do you see yeah. Africa potentially um, becoming hosts of big tournaments like the Euros, of course, not the Euros, uh, but um, similar sort of things? World Cups, FIFA sports? World Cups, yeah. Um, look, you know, um, I had the pleasure of being in Ghana for the whole of uh, AFCON, and although the, the guy and team were a little bit disappointed. Look, it was a fantastic competition, you know, and uh, it was full of thrills and spills, very good coverage. And, you know, it's a big money earner, you know, in the German economy, you know, with the Euros, you know, they're going to earn around about a billion Euros yeah. out of the out of the out this competition. And, uh, you know, it's going to kick down the economy. But if we go back to AFCON, Cote d'Ivoire, the hosts, uh, we're nearly out of the competition. This is how the competition went. At the group stage, they it, it wasn't until the last game that they finished third and somehow they managed to qualify. Yeah. They sacked the manager. It was a fairy tale story. <laughs> they sacked the manager, brought in a younger coach yeah. and eventually won the competition. Yeah. And what a fantastic story to this. Yes. And to be honest with you, Cote d'Ivoire, they, they invested a billion US dollars in getting Afghan off the ground. Yeah. The coverage was fantastic. The stadia in Africa, one of the biggest problems, unlike Europe, is the stadiums. Yes. You know, it, you know, in Europe, with all due respect, they have good stadiums and there's little or no work required to do at major competitions. But in, in, in the African countries, a lot of the stadiums need to be upgraded, reinvested in, and, and in some cases are rebuilt. Are these discussions taking place, um, they are. Michael? They're, Do people move on after AFCON? Or are there stakeholders looking at what's happening in Germany? They're going to see what's happening in Paris at the Olympics yeah. next month and they're saying, this could yeah. be us. We could get a piece of this multi-billion dollar pie. And, and I'm, sure, I'm sure, look, the, 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 the opportunity is there. I mean, Morocco have got the next AFCON. 
Um, in, and the dates have just been announced. Uh, December 22nd, it will run over Christmas and New Year down to January 22nd. And they're saying already that Morocco are going to produce the best Afghan ever. Wow. The best Afghan ever. And, you know, they, they, they've had things in place for the last two years. But, you know, go, m moving back, what do we need to do in Africa? Well, it's all about infrastructure and investment, sponsors. Th this is the main issues here. You know, building the new stadiums or upgrading them. Uh, I mean, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, they, they um, prepared four new stadiums for the competition. Yeah. Four new stadiums. And they had to build roads and infrastructure all around these stadiums. Hotels had to be created yeah. and built. Yeah. The amenities, the restaurants, the food. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it fueled the long-term economic growth in Cote d'Ivoire.